Mr. Ward, and honored to be here today in the presence of our First Lady and Justice O'Connor, who's our Chancellor at William & Mary, and all of you active community women leaders and volunteers. Thank you for all of your efforts on behalf of women and children. I need to be a strong voice because the headline information in this country is a jumbled mishmash of half-truths and distortions, resulting in millions of women of all ages needlessly frightened away from hormones, and this causes untold suffering. Now, I promise you, you're not going to hear a book today. Based on one deeply flawed study of horse estrogens and synthetic progestins, women in this country have been given the impression that all hormones are bad. That is simply not true. In Europe and other countries, women have gotten sound science-based information to be able to make sound choices. American women are not getting the truth about crucial benefits of hormone use or safer options. I intend to do all I can to turn this around. I recently launched a grassroots campaign called The Straight Truth About Hormones and a foundation to support the campaign. Why do I call it The Straight Truth About Hormones? Let me give you a couple of examples that are the stories behind the headlines. The Women's Health Initiative in the United States studied only Premarin and Prempro. These hormones are very different from what our bodies make, and yet we have had FDA-approved bioidentical hormone products in this country since 1976, and women don't know about it. The WHI did not study any other kinds of hormones, and yet the media has called it the definitive study of hormone therapy across the board. Women on estrogen alone in the WHI had a lower risk of breast cancer than women taking no hormones. Yet the media ignores this positive finding, and women still have the mistaken idea that our estrogen causes breast cancer, and this isn't the case. We hear that hormones cause blood clots. Yet French studies showed that estradiol in a gel or patch, our own natural hormone, had no higher risk of blood clots than women taking no hormones. Yet women taking oral estrogen in pills like Premarin had four times the risk. So what's the pattern of hormone use in France versus the United States? In France, 80% of the women use estradiol in a gel or a patch. In the United States, 80% of women are still given oral pills of horse estrogens. French women had bioidentical estrogel in 1974. American women got this product in 2004, 30 years later. American men have had bioidentical testosterone patches for years. After several years of safety data and excellent outcomes with the bioidentical testosterone patch for women, we are still denied its approval in this country, while our, Amer our European sisters all have access to it and it's made by an American company. That ought to tell you where to go for your vacation. <laughs> by the way, Viagra was approved for men with only six months of safety data. They are now requiring a five-year safety study before we can have our testosterone patch. Men get their hormones, women get Prozac, Paxil, or Effexor, <laughs> and ladies, let me tell you, you can hang up any sexual response when you're on one of those. <laughs> we, 
We have many FDA approved bioidentical estradiol and progesterone products and women don't know about them. Women don't need to have expensive, strange, unregulated, compounded bioidentical hormones to get something like our bodies have. We have them and you need to know about it. Recent studies found that women on hormone therapy had 15 to 20 percent lower deaths from all causes and yet the, compared to women not taking hormones, and yet the media ignored that positive finding, and most women don't know it. Our First Lady talked about her initiative with heart disease. European studies and many of our early observational studies in the United States when women were started on hormones earlier found a 30 to 40 percent lower risk of heart disease in women taking hormones compared to those who didn't. And yet all you hear since the Women's Health Initiative of elderly women is hormones cause heart attacks. That is not the case. And we need to look at these issues and women need the straight truth from the research internationally. The bottom line is that women in this country are getting short shrift. We live longer than men and every single study from my entire medical career has shown that we as women have poorer quality of life as we age, greater health care cost, and more pain and disability before we die compared to men. The situation is a travesty and this must stop. We are among the first generation in which millions of women have the opportunity to live another 30 or 40 years after our childbearing. International research clearly shows that the right hormones at the right time in the right delivery, in the right dose, for the right women can profoundly improve quality of life, reduce health care and nursing home cost, reduce disability and premature death, and reduce dependence on anywhere from eight to ten other medications that are costly and have side effects that women are being given to treat every symptom of menopause triggered by the hormone changes. Our families, our society, and our world need the wisdom, clarity of thinking, and productivity of our women if we are going to help solve today's critical social problems. We do not need women of any age who are lost in the fog of low estrogen or over tranquilized on mood stabilizers and antidepressants or trapped in abusive relationships because they don't have the energy to get out or lying disabled in a nursing home due to an epidemic of osteoporosis that's treatable and pre preventable. It is time for American women to have balance in the hormone story. It's time for our women to get the latest medical information from studies around the world to put the benefits and risk in proper perspective and help women make sound choices and not just hear about one study of horse estrogens and not just the latest soundbite or celebrity book or fear-inducing headlines. It's time for us to have baseline hormone levels taken in young women when they're healthy to know what that means and then be able to have a guide for the future when problems strike. It's time to stop being compromised and accepting mediocre health. It's time for women to be a stronger, louder, and more focused voice for ourselves and for all women. It's time for women to have quality of life, energy, and vitality. That's why I launched this campaign. I want to lead those of us going through the change to drive the change in how hormones are used and viewed in the United States to help our women have the same health benefits our European sisters do. And that's my vow as your recipient of this award. And I sincerely thank you for this honor.